Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin, where we learned that with great kills, there must also come great nails. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you can read what Nails in a Coffin is all about in the section down below, because these videos really are not film reviews, rather a breakdown of the kills, and I evaluate how well the victim responded to their attack. I am continuing my redo of the Child's Play franchise that I covered three years ago. I wanted to give them another shot. So today we're covering Child's Play 3, which actually released only 10 months after Child's Play 2. Very quick turnaround. However, they did age Andy up about 8 years, so now he's a teenager in military school. Alright cadets, fall in line as we give Child's Play 3 some nails in a coffin. When we last saw Chucky, his head had just exploded in the Playpal toy factory. Now it's years later and Playpal is finally cleaning up this mess from all those years ago. A crane picks up Chucky's remains and is such dripping blood from the good guy into this giant vat of plastic. Well, this is enough to contaminate said plastic and the first doll off the new assembly line, of course, it's going to be live with Chucky. PlayPal CEO Mr. Sullivan gets that first good guy doll delivered to him. He's in his office late at night watching the news. Little does he know, Chucky's got some plans for him. He's practicing his putting when Chucky takes a large jar of marbles and spreads them all over the floor. Sullivan steps on him, causing him to slip and fall down to the ground. Chucky then starts to torment the CEO by turning on all the toys in his office. This was a pretty much well choreographed segment. It's fun to see all the ways Chucky was messing with the CEO, pretty much just for his own amusement. Sullivan's back is hurt, so he knows all this crazy stuff is going on. He crawls to his desk, trying to call for help. Chucky throws a dart into his hand and then jumps on his back and starts to strangle him with the yo-yo string. Chucky's just having a blast with this kill, laughing as Sullivan draws his last breath. CEO of Playbell Toys, Mr. Sullivan, is awarded two nails in a coffin. When he fell in the marbles, he hurt his back. And if anyone is watching this ever had back issues, it can stop you dead in your tracks. Pun intended. I can see why he looked so disorientated when all the toys were coming to life. He'd have no idea what the hell was going on. He was injured and he tried to get to a phone, but Chucky got on his back and started to strangle him. Chucky does have the strength of a full-size human, and I just didn't see Sullivan do anything blatantly stupid or try hard enough to survive. So that's why I'm going to go down the middle and give him two nails in the coffin. Uncle Pete, I'm staring them like you, you fool. Chucky then uses Sullivan's computer to find a file they have on Andy. He sees that Andy is going to Kent Military Academy. So Chucky has himself shipped to the Military Academy to go meet his friend till the end. Once Chucky gets to the school, Tyler was asked to deliver the package to Andy. The package gets knocked out of his hands and it falls down the stairs. When Tyler goes to retrieve the package, he sees the good guy symbol and gets really excited. He then takes the package to a secluded area and decides to open up somebody else's mail. Of course, it's Chucky. He introduces himself to Tyler. Now that Chucky is in a new body and Tyler is the first person he told the secret to, he plans on transferring his soul into Tyler's body. Chucky starts the Heart of Dambala chant, but before he can finish it, Colonel Cochran shows up and scolds Tyler for playing with dolls. That's not allowed. Colonel Cochran takes Chucky away. He goes outside and throws our good guy in a dumpster, right as about to be dumped in the large garbage truck. Chucky starts to scream as the garbage truck empties into the dumpster into the back. The garbage man activates a trash compactor and then stops when he hears his screaming, thinking there's a kid in there. He gets out of the truck and jumps in the back part looking for the kid. While he's looking for the cause of the screams, Chucky climbs out of the back of the truck. He gets in the driver's seat, starts the trash compactor again, trapping the worker. Trying with all his might, the sanitation worker can't get out of the back of the truck, and Chucky is laughing excitingly as the man is crushed to death. I'm giving give the garbage truck guy two nails in the coffin. He jumped in to save a kid he thought was in danger, and it was a selfless act, and it wasn't a realm of possibility for a kid to have gotten in a dumpster. It was a military academy. For all you know, some kid jumped in there to try to escape, not knowing it was dangerous. So... He did try and save somebody. He couldn't have predicted what would happen. I would have given him more than two nails, but he did leave the truck on. He turned the trash compactor part off, but if I were him, I probably would have turned that part off and then taken the keys and then jump in the back because then you want to make sure the kid in the back couldn't have been crushed and you want to put yourself in danger. It was a split-second decision. He was being brave. He could have done a little bit more, which is why this one definitely goes down the middle with me and giving him two nails in the coffin. Colonel Cochran is Chucky's next victim. Chucky winds up in a colonel's office late at night while he was trying to find Tyler. The colonel goes to his office and he can tell somebody's been in there, so he starts to look around. 
He finds a Chucky doll. He doesn't know why the heck that's in there. Thinking it's probably just a prank, he throws Chucky in the trash again. Chucky gets out of the trash can, knocking it over, and then the colonel's concerned from this noise. Then Chucky springs out from hiding, screaming at the colonel while holding up a knife. This scares the crap out of the colonel so much that he grabs the left side of his chest and stumbles back. He's having a heart attack, and he falls through the layout display in his office, and then crashes to the floor and passes away. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, this was a tough one to rate. I mean, the guy had a heart attack from shock, so I'm going to give the colonel two nows in a coffin. I just can't say he did anything stupid or foolish. He was pretty much just scared to death when he saw a dog come to life, jump out in front of him with a knife screaming. I can understand how this could be shocking to somebody, and if you already had a heart condition, the shock of that, I guess, could cause a heart attack. I don't want to take points away for, um, for him for liking fried fruit or burgers, but you know, nothing he did here really made it easier for him to die or to survive. So this is another one where I'm going to go down the middle and give him two nails in the coffin. Kent Academy barber Sergeant Botnick is next up on the chopping block. Sergeant Botnick is the poster child for an edgelord. He collects locks of hair from every cadet he gives a haircut. While cleaning up, he finds Chucky in a cabinet. He picks him up and puts him in the barber's chair about to give Chucky a trim. As Botnick approaches him with the trimmers, Chucky reaches down and grabs a hold of a straight razor. Right as Botnick gets to Chucky's hairline, a good guy takes that straight razor and slashes the barber across the throat, slicing him open and killing him. Sergeant Botnick cut his way to receiving... Two nails in the coffin? Now, yeah, he was an edgelord and weird, but I can't say he did anything stupid that aided in his demise. All he did was find a doll and go give it a haircut. Okay, weirdo. You know, there's going to be sharp instruments around since he was in a barber shop. so having a straight razor next to the chair wasn't out of the ordinary. He had no inclination that the doll would spring to life and attack him, and that seems to be the trend with this movie. I haven't given out less than two nails in a coffin yet, but looking back over the kills, I feel these ratings are accurate. Just not a lot of stupid decisions in this movie yet. Chucky is just that ruthless. So, Sergeant Botnick, two nails in a coffin. At Kent Military Academy, it's time for this season's War Games. It's War Games! It's red versus blue, and the cadets will be using real rifles, which are modified to shoot paint pellets. However, Chucky has a little surprise for everyone. He snuck into the armory and replaced the paint pellet rounds with live ammunition for the red team. This just shows you how sick and twisted Chucky really is. I mean, these are kids for crying out loud. They're just kids. Who cares? Moving on to our next kill. It's the middle of the night and the cadets are in the midst of their war games. Chucky has to seal a hostage with a grenade. Cadet Shelton shows up and he sees Chucky for the first time. The red team, with the live rounds unknowingly, approaches, takes aim at Cadet Sheldon, and he fires his weapon. It's the direct hit, and Sheldon is killed. I'm going to war Cadet Sheldon two nails in a coffin. This was a sad death. Even though he was an asshole, he didn't deserve this. Plus, it was a kid accidentally killing another kid. The only person at fault here is Chucky. This is definitely one of the darker kills in the entire franchise. You still have the kid who killed Sheldon. I mean, that's going to F him up for life. I just didn't even Sheldon do anything stupid here. He was playing part of the games. Nobody knew there were going to be live rounds on scene. I put more of the blame on the leadership at Ken Academy. There was no supervision around. In fact, I'm going to award Ken Military Academy the Dumbass Award. I haven't given this award out in a while, and this is an award for those who don't deserve to die, but they're very stupid or should have died or their actions caused the death of somebody else. I'm giving the dumbass award to all the leadership at Kent Military Academy. Dumbass! You're stupid! I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Our next death happens pretty quick. There's chaos all around the camp, and the cadets realize just what happened. Annie's attacked, people believe and he's responsible for this. Chucky just thinks this is funny as hell. He then launches a grenade in the middle of the crowd of cadets. Nobody knows they're in the blast radius of a live grenade except for Whitehurst. Whitehurst makes a split-second decision, throwing his body onto the grenade, sacrificing himself to save everybody else. I do remember what I gave Whitehurst three years ago when I first covered this movie. It, and it's going to stay the same. He's getting four nails in the coffin. He had seconds to decide what to do. If he yelled at everybody to get it away, get down, that wouldn't have done any good. Too many people were too close to the grenade and there was too little time. Whitehurst was a scared puppy the entire movie, but I guess he had more courage than even he thought what was possible. I guess in the times of crisis, even we can surprise ourselves. But this was a selfless act in an effort to save people. To him, it was his only option 
to save as many people as possible. You know, some of these people even bullied him. So a sacrifice like this is what Four Nails in a Coffin is all about. <laughs> Our next death is off screen, so I can't give it a nail rating. But what happens is Tyler runs to a nearby carnival and he goes in a security tent to get some help. When Tyler's trying to tell the security guard about Charles, the guard pulls out Chucky and says, Hey, look what I found. Andy and the Silva, they eventually get to the tent, and when they find the security guard's body, they saw that Chucky had shot him. We didn't see how he was attacked by Chucky, so we really can't give him a nail rating. Chucky's now chasing Tyler through this horror-themed roller coaster. Tyler gets his leg stuck, and Chucky's standing over him. Before Chucky can start his little chant, a large sickle from an animatronic Grim Reaper swipes down and cuts off a piece of Chucky's face. Chucky has Tyler high on top of the roller coaster in the middle of the hard umbala champ. Andy shoots off the good guy's arm, so Chucky's trying to rush through the chant, trying to finish it. Andy's next round shoots Chucky right in the chest, sending him flying backwards. Andy gets atop of the structure and picks up Tyler right as Chucky jumps on Andy's back and attacks him. Tyler almost falls off the structure and Andy's holding on to his arms as Chucky's going berserk on Andy. Tyler gets a knife out of his pocket, reaches up to Andy, both stretching their arms. He gets a knife to Andy, he uses it to cut off Chucky's other arm. This causes Chucky to fall slow motion into a large industrial fan, which chops him up like a blender, temporarily destroying Chucky for a third time. I'll be back. I always come back. For the third time in a row, Chucky gets the final set of nails, and I'm going to give him three nails in a coffin this time. He still took a lot of damage, having had his face cleaved off, he lost both of his arms, but I feel he could have done just a little bit more considering that he's Chucky, still tough as hell to kill, and he was determined to get out of this body. This death wasn't as epic as the first two movies. I mean, in the past, he was burnt to hell, decapitated, dismembered. You know, he cut off his own legs, had boiling plastic poured all over him. But I still think he deserves a very respectable three nails in a coffin. Here we go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my nails in a coffin for a child's play three. I do like this movie. I think it gets some undeserved hate. I think what hurt it is it had to follow two of the best movies in the franchise. And I think there's something else that hurt it coming out so soon after part two with them aging Andy eight years. I do love the face of Pizza Chucky like my doll here. Where did he go? I could have sworn when I started the video Chucky was there. But um, here's a summary of the nails I've awarded. <laughs> Child's Play 3 has a very high average of 2.43 nails, which does make sense when you look at those ratings. I didn't give anybody less than two nails in a coffin, but it all feels warranted. I think they're all fair. Not a lot of stupid decisions in this movie. It's just Chucky was just very, very evil and ruthless in those movies. Just really didn't give people much of a chance. And here's the average nails in a coffin for the first three films in the Child's Play franchise. The first two very close to each other, with part three coming up very high, and that's going to be tough to beat. And We'll have to wait and see over the next couple of weeks to see if Charles Play 3 can still keep that top spot. I'll see you here next week when I cover Bride of Chucky, one of my favorite films in the entire franchise because of, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll see then how those victims get nailed. So until then, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. You know all the usual. Take care, stay safe, and be good to each other. I am your friendly neighbor, Uncle Pete. Remember, with great kills, that must also come great now.